So I just just want I don't I don't I don't know. I think right now because I'm not where I want to be, I'm still hungry. But I hope when I get to where I want to be that I stay hungry as I am now. What I love about where I'm at now is the fact that I'm still hungry. And like that that itself is a gift that I enjoy. I'm hungry in a motherfucker. You know? Yeah. Always. Yeah. Always. That's why I love you. These like wheels you. are always fucking turning. Yeah. Uh, if I have an idea for somebody, I'll pass on the car. Hey, man, I was watching on stage the mm-hmm. I think you should really fucking jump off a building, whatever the fuck it is that you do. <laughs> I love watching you. You know, uh, ever since I went back to the comedy store, I was trying to explain to my friend Jody today mm-hmm. that your game improves. I've said it on the podcast many times. Right. You're at the world's best, at least the top three uh, places to do stand-up comedy. This mm-hmm. is it. This is... This is it. You're a fucking. You're a Texas. You're an Army Ranger. Right. You're a Navy SEAL. You're you're a fucking. You're the best of the best. You know. And I, I, I a couple nights I went there and watched you, and I was blown away by oh, your writing. Sure. Thanks, man. Blown away from the abortion joke to no commitment. You know, you've got three things going on that you have broken the joke down. Mm-hmm. I would love to aspire to write like somebody like you. It is. Are you, are you kidding me, Joey D? Oh my this? God! And you're smooth. <laughs> you're smooth, which I really like. I like people that come around the back door and make you think, but fuck your world up. You make them think and fuck mm-hmm. their world up. I come at you. Joe Rogan comes at you. It's a no-brainer. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a different type of energy. Mm-hmm. Your energy is very. It's jazz. It's jazz. It's, and you know what? It's Jamaican jazz, <laughs> which doesn't exist. It's you. The smoothness in your voice and how your tones and you stop, that's the gift. Right. That's the gift that people don't know. The, the power of the voice and stand-up mm-hmm. is what don't hit you till about the 12th year. Right. When you realize how powerful your voice is. When I whisper, yo, don't listen to nobody. And then when I get loud, it's too, that the power right, of the right. mind. And I know it. I, I don't know how to teach it to you. If you came to me, Lee, and said, Dog, I want to be the best stand-up. I was watching the other night and what you do with your voice. Your voice controls the game. That's why they give you the microphone. That's why I fuck up and walk away from the microphone. When you walk away from the microphone, you lose your power. That power is, but your voice and comedy and your thing. Like, when I close my eyes, it's like uh, Julia Serving. Uh-huh. The rhythm is in the... Damn, I'll take that. Yeah, you, you're, the, you're the the smoothness. And I've never heard that type of smoothness. Damn. There's a guy that has that smoothness, mm-hmm. but it's a complete different smoothness, and that's Dave Chappelle. Right, right. It's a complete different smoothness. You took it somewhere else. So right. it's really... That's what I see, man. Oh, well, thanks, man. In I my comedy that. world, I like... I like, Bro, I'm a student of the game. Right. I want to see what makes you tick, mm-hmm. and I want to see why they're laughing. Right. You know what I'm saying? I want to see why they're laughing. Let's see why they're fucking really laughing. Are they his words? If people knew that your words don't even matter. Right. People, if people knew at home, it's like when people say, I love intelligent comedy and thoughtful. <laughs> I like in comedy that, it, what they say, that incites my brain. Right? Go suck a dick that smells like ass. That'll make you fucking think. <laughs> All right? Hilarious. You know what I'm saying? That'll make Go you think. Go suck a dick that smells like ass. Yeah, why is this guy's dick smells like ass as you're sucking it? That's his $54,000 question right there. But it's, uh, I love stand-up, man. I've always loved it. And the more I do it, the more respect I have for it. Right. I have a ton of respect for it. I've never run a light. I've never disrespected oh, a comic like that. I have a ton of respect for it because it took me out of a dark place. It right. took me out of a gutter. I respect it. I respect it like a fucking lion. I respect that comedy store stage. Mm-hmm. I know what's happened to me. You know, I never went to Juilliard. Right. I ain't no fucking, who's the big black dude? Bing oh, Rames. Bing Rames. Bing I didn't Rames. go to Juilliard. That motherfucker went to Juilliard. I didn't yeah. go to Juilliard. I didn't take no acting classes when I was in New York. You know what? Acting was fucking fronting drugs. Your life. That's your life. Acting yeah. is when you go up to people and say, dog, lend me 20. I'll bring them back in an hour. <laughs> I got this chick that's coming. <laughs> this dude, I sold them an encyclopedia, and they give you the 20. That's acting. Uh, and then you are in a fucking room with, you know, the director from 
drugstore cowboy, mm -hmm. and John Travolta's in the room. And they, I thought about that today because Battlestar Galactica was. What's that movie Travolta made about the Scientologist? Uh, uh, something Earth. Battle Earth. Earth. Battle Earth. Something like that. I was, bro. Me and Billy Goddell were about to get hired to be <laughs> Travolta's sidekicks in a movie about a singer from Hoboken, New Jersey, that disrespected Sinatra. Mm -hmm. True story. Jimmy Roselli disrespected Frank Sinatra. Didn't sing at his mother. Jimmy Roselli was petrified of Sinatra. Sinatra was petrified of Roselli. Uh -huh. He had a better voice than Sinatra. And his mother would always talk about Jimmy Roselli. You got to be more like Jimmy Roselli. <laughs> so when Sinatra busted out, he hired Jimmy Roselli to sing at his mother's thing, and he never showed up. Oh, so shit. he said, really? I'm cutting you off. He cut him off so bad that Jimmy Roselli used to sell albums from the trunk of his car in Hoboken, New Jersey. Damn. And the Italians would go, Jimmy, close the trunk. You're embarrassing us. <laughs> 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 oh, so man. we had that fucking movie. And I'll never forget, dog. I went to the comedy store on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. And got fucked up. Like, blow and the whole fucking thing. Eating somebody's ass. Like, till <laughs> three in the morning. <laughs> Just a normal Tuesday. And this, and I had a callback for this. Now, I had gone over it. I knew it. But that fucking cocaine and all that party and threw the shit off. And I went in there Monday at 10 o'clock. And I thought it was going to be me and who directed Cocaine Cowboy, you know? Van the Zandt. Documentary? No, no, the, the movie. The movie? With, with Matt Dillon, Van Zant. Badass motherfucker. He did something after that. It wasn't bad. I thought it was just going to be Gus Van Zant. Fuck no, it was Travolta. Oh shit. At ten fifteen. I oh shit, after the night you had. After the night I got, Travolta oh, gotta show up in this bitch. <laughs> and I remember I had to go in there first and he was great and I did great and they, they called my agent and they said, oh, you know shit. what, we got a pen in him. And two days later my agent goes, You got a spot tonight somewhere they wanna come see you. Gus Van Zant and the casting director. Mm -hmm. I said, Yeah, at the comic store and they fucking showed up. Gus Van Zant shook my hand. He said, Listen, I'll be seeing you soon. And I'm in Miami doing the improv, feeling good about myself. I'm about to do a Travolta movie. And my fucking manager calls me. He goes, dog, he took Battlefield Galactico <laughs> over fucking some Scientology uh. movie over your movie. It's over. It got written. The script is done. Nothing. They never did it again. I mean, he had to take that movie. He had to take Battlefield Earth. Yeah, they showed him pictures <laughs> of him playing with little fucking Asian boys, <laughs> playing soccer with little Asian boys with fucking thongs on. They know so all his secrets. They, on, they recorded them. Did. Yeah, he had to take it. Who would tell somebody? That's how they got. The, you seen the Scientology documentary? I tell you what, this is how they come to you though. They don't. You don't tell them shit at first. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. come to you once you're sucking some dude's dick. He's gonna take out like a little iPhone and go. Somebody wants to talk to you on Periscope. <laughs> <laughs> and it's that old dude, L. Ron Hubbard, going, listen, we got you. We got cameras so all over that room. We got a dildo up your ass. That's going to be <laughs> fucked up when we show the pictures to Welcome Back Cottage. <laughs> you, you better be up at 444 Los Feliz tomorrow. So bring an envelope and bring a notebook. <laughs>